Right, we'll try another scene with a stream, a small river distance. I'm going to put a bank down here and up here. Now if I cough and sputter, you'll have to forgive me. I've got a lousy cough. And last Friday, I liberated an empty wine bottle. I needed one with the top on at the bottom of my green bin. And I think they're about three foot six high. And had it been any higher, I would have disappeared headfirst into the bin. As it was, I, I crushed a rib stupidly, but it wouldn't have mattered had I not had the cough. So every time I cough, it racks me. So I'm doing this under sufferance because I didn't do one yesterday, and I would have done. My grandson is with us for a couple of days. He's got a shocking cough and cold as well. So my wife's just taken him to the doctors to get some, uh, some, well, something. So he'll be off school for a couple of days. All right, okay, so here we go. Two inch hake, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints great, burnt sienna. I won't use the burnt, burnt umber. I tend to use that mainly for um, for beaches, for uh, mud. It's a good colour mixed with a bit of uh, burnt sienna and raw sienna. Uh, I can make burnt umber really with the burnt sienna and, uh, and Payne's grey. So I'll uh, put my glasses on. Ah, right. Now the water's a little bit murky from Monday, but... For those of you that are struggling with the hake, the Ron Ransom hake, persevere. It's not impossible. It does take a bit of getting loose, used to the amount of water these things hold. But persevere because you'll find it worth it. But of course you don't have to use it. You can do your own thing with your own brushes. I just merely share with you what I do at any one time. And what I do today, I won't necessarily do tomorrow. So I don't work to a technique other than work from light to dark. That you have to do with oil and acrylic, you can work any way you want. Uh, right, okay. So a bit of uh, raw sienna in, in that sky. I'm going to use a bit of light red as well. And I'll lift that up. Quite nice, strong, strong colour. Right, let's use a bit of, bit of red across there, then. across the... Uh, Put a bit of nicey sort of cloud is coming on. I'm, I'm just making this up. I'm not. I've not got anything in mind. Oh, very easy. Totally unpredictable. Except that if you overdo it, you will end up with cauliflowers and funny things in your picture. Right. Okay. Then. So that will do, that will dry lighter. Um, well, I, I, while it's wet, I can put in other colours, so I'm going to use this. It's still the old ultramarine and, and light red. So I just want this bit darker in there. And I put a few little bits coming across here, whether they register as we get a bit. Dryer, who knows? Right, I'll reclip the paper. Somebody left me a timely comment on my video. Well, I've, had, I've had loads of comments, and one was uh, I could have said everything needed to be said in a few minutes, so the video was too long. Tough luck. Um, and someone else who, who gave me a reminder about formaldehyde. Now, I don't know what part that plays in. in, in um, Hardboard dust when you rough it up, and of course we breathe it in. And I don't wear a mask, but then I fitted carpets as my business for forty or over forty years, and I still do the odd carpet job. But my rest are going now. And I've been breathing in carpet dust for decades. I think when you're young, you think you're invincible, and then you get into a bad habit, and the damage is done. But I'm seventy-two in three weeks, so getting on. And apart from this cough at the moment, cold and aching wrists, 
I'm pretty good. Uh, right, let's put in, and I'm going to dry that. I'm going to dry it. Turn that nice all on. Right, headphones off. Of course, if you're working plein air, plein air, you won't have the luxury of uh, of the hairdryer. Right, so let's use those colours for the background. Uh, let's just get in trees. Instead of using the sienna, let's see what happens with it, with these lovely colours. Harder, harder stuff. Now, look, that's going to be covered up, but I want nice, hard edges. So, if you're painting over wet or damp paper, you need very rich, thick paint. So, this is just the other side of the lake, Seven Islands or something like that, which I've painted many times. Or my idea of it, because my paintings don't actually exist. They're based on ideas. So now I'm going to reverse everything I've said about cool in the distance and warm in the foreground, because we're not very far away from that point. Okay, get some nice dark in here. Bit of shadowy colour. See, we're, we're making a picture, a painting, rather than a portrait of anything. There are plenty of people that can copy exactly. That's not a skill I have, or patience needed. But I really haven't got the eye for photographic work. I try to make up for that with atmosphere and simplicity. Not a bad thing. Right, let's get that nice red in there. Also, let's put some sienna in there as well. Because that, as I'm putting on thick, will we'll register. So it's neat paints now. Okay, so let's just etch out some trunks with your finger. That's to show you're copying what I'm doing. Okay, now we'll uh, put in some bank. Okay. And we'll Get some raw sienna along that horizon. Then we'll put some dark under that as well. This is a sort of pebbly, shingly gravel bank to the this pond. It's a lake. Well, it's a small lake. It's seven islands, or it could be any anywhere. But. Um, Seven Islands is a lovely little beauty spot nearby, which has seven islands in it, seven small islands, so let's just put this in here. This is just, it's reflecting what's behind it, in the placid water. I'm not sure what I'll do in the middle, but I'll cover up a little bit. So there we are. So we can put a bit of detail in, in that. That's a background. Two colours, well, plus the raw sienna, which went in neat. So it's red and blue, light red and blue. But beware, the red, the light red, is very, very strong. And you certainly don't need student quality paint for that. It's a red oxide, iron oxide, I believe. Uh, the other colours are, they're all colours, including the light red. Um, 
21 mil tubes, milliliter, uh, or 0.71 US fluid ounce, whatever that is. Okay, so let's start to do a bit of bit of stuff in the foreground here now. So I'm going to use some yellow, and I'm going to use some blue and some sienna. So we'll just get this in here. See if I can get away without using that Payne's grey. It's so uh, easy as a shortcut. And we'll put some some red in there, mate. Right? And then when I scrape out, hopefully it will leave some some nice pebbles and green pebbles rather than the colours I usually use, the burnt sienna and Payne's grey. Uh, we'll, we'll dot all this with a bit of a some rigor work. Oh, go all the way across. I think the lake is in a very nice angle there. Just a bit of a push in the front there. Right, let's get in some raw sienna beyond that. Coming across here. Right, now I want some good... I'll use some burnt sienna now. And ultramarine. Bit of red in there. And that is going to be my background to my trees. And I might do a similar thing over the other side. Just some, some stuff, just to support my trees, but don't do the trees all the same. We don't want a symmetrical painting. All right, let's get some dark in here now. Now we've got our card and we'll start scraping some, some grass out of here and then a few little pebbles. You've got to get this right and if you do it too quickly the, the water will fill back into the, where you've scraped, scraped it out. Uh, we'll do some in here. There aren't any rocks over the Seven Islands, not that I've ever noticed, they're mostly pebbles. Just small pebbles. If, if you get the paint wet there, you can you can draw it up with uh, with the sharp corner of the piece of card. Uh, that always works, but, but we'll just enhance a couple of this, a uh, couple of these. Okay, that'll do. Right, now we'll put in with the hake, it's all very simple stuff, some nice some nice trees not big trees because they're right on the edge of the water and here they are quite stunted. And we'll get some more over here. I'll put a few autumn leaves on there. The Monday I painted a snow scene in December, early December. Well, we don't get snow down in London. If we're lucky, well, I don't think it's luck, but the snow is good to look at for a couple of days of it. And it starts to muck up everything. Okay. Right, we'll, we'll do some more on that in a minute. So let's do a little counter to that over the other side. Let's just one coming up here. 
just to give a bit of balance to, or a bit of weight. Look, if you did all this with a hake, you don't need any other brush. And you get better with use, of course. Oh, little John Paul this morning. He, he doesn't stop talking. He's nine now, just nine, nine November. He acts away, and in the end, you think, oh, yeah, good rest for your parents. Lovely kid, though. Okay, that'll uh, do. Now we'll assume the light is coming that way. So let's put a bit of bit of dark on one side. Actually, just so we can we can take out a bit of this, just to make it look as if the light is coming from the right. Then my hake is splitting a little bit. It's because it's dry, but I don't want it too wet because it will uh, muck up this sort of passage here. Right. Okay. Let's just anchor that. So it looks like it's growing out of something, a bit of shadow in here. Right, now what we're going to do now is to dry the hake. I'll put some water on the paint because I need a bit of water for my, for my colour that I'm going to put in for the autumn leaves. So we could, we're going to use dark ultramarine and burnt sienna and some raw sienna. So let's get the raw sienna in first. So. so these can be on the light side. Just a few few uh, leaves hanging on the trees on that side. That's not registering really. We need a bit more wet. Right, now we'll go darker with the ultramarine Burnt sienna. So it's all very easy. They're, they're not really showing up. Still a bit darker, uh, a bit wetter. Burnt sienna and ultramarine. That's better. Got those coming here. So we've just got a few. And we'll put in some autumn leaves over that and some in here because we're going to put some of these in. Try not to make these things regular. You must change the shape of your brush or the angle of it. Some across there, don't forget that. You'll get some in front. Just do some there. It would be easy if I use Payne's Clay, but I said that I would not use it on this. Right, we've got to do some reflection in there. So I'm going to give it a good dry, and then we'll, we'll put a reflection of or some dry brush. So oh, I'll have to my tea, but it's cold now. Oh, I hate cold tea. All right, uh, headphones off or mute now. Oh. Now I'm going to wet from here because beyond it will show as, hopefully, it will show as wind ruff, ruffled water. Don't scrub this because you'll find that you'll move the colour and that's what we don't want to do. So we'll go all the way along there. Now we'll put some of that background colour in, the blue and the red. 
Okay. So you just let gravity pull the reflection down. And just have some sort of a bit of roughish stuff in there. And we've got a bit, a bit darker at the top on that. Oh, that's just I want to dry brush some in here, so let's get a bit darker there. Some dark. Let's use the blue and the red as my darker colour here. Right, before I overdo it, I guess the rigger. Oh, I feel a cough coming on. So I've nearly finished. Right, let's just do a bit of uh, rigor work, not a lot. Just. Oh, why did I do that? They're supposed to be reflecting the sky above, but it uh, doesn't seem to work very well. Alright, okay, let's do some more. Uh, just a little bit of detail in there. Not a lot. Right, that's that's it. I've had enough. For today, anyway. So let's uh, put a signature in here. And we'll put a little bit of a bird. There. Well, there we are. That's a very simple painting. Put it in a mount to find a bit of uh, tape. Ooh. I've got a halogen light in front of my easel. I bought it for about ten pounds, or fifteen quid. Uh, it's good, very good. Bought it when we used when we were camping up to last year with a, a trailer. Instant warmth, but at night it was so bright you could read by it. Right, let's put the mouse on it. Mm -hmm. Well, there we are. This bag's a damn all, as Ted Wesson would say. But my heart isn't really in it at the moment. But anyway, it's a painting, isn't it? It's a, it's original. It doesn't exist anywhere else other than the fact that I've done it. Uh, I could put some more twigs in, in fact I will, just a few. Because th these trees, there are lots and lots of twigs and branches on them, as if it's been pollarded, it's pollarded at some stage, and they just come up all over the place. They're, I don't know, they're all thorns. Just, just adds a little bit of interest. Okay, there we go. So try these things. This is a 
a, a, an intermediate, beginners to intermediate sort of painting, showing the elements of doing a reflection, that should have been straight to there. Um, you can uh, lift out a bit of wind in that, and when I find my toilet tissue, here it is. You can just, with a damp brush, just, just lift out and then just, oops, just take that, take that out. Like a fish is just sort of, Right, that's the sort of thing you can just carry on. That's not parallel. But it doesn't matter. It's the way the wind blows. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.